Hello and welcome to another week of Candid Moments with myself, Sophia Gray. This week's topic is how to manage sleep as an entrepreneur. I'd like to have all your comments, so please feel free to share them in the feed so that I can come back and answer any questions you may have on this week's topic. Each week we bring to you different topics from myself to share with you on how I deal with each of these topics. It's every Friday at 12 p.m. So book it in your diaries so you don't miss an episode. And there's also a replay. So if you're on the replay of this, please um, do hashtag replay and I'll sure come back to you. If you like what you're hearing and you want more of these different topics, please feel free to share as well. And I will share my contact details at the end of this presentation. Also, I'd love to hear from you if there's any topics that you also feel that you'd like me to address that you may be going through as a business owner or a property um, business owner. So please feel free to share that as well. And I'll do my best to actually do a candid moments with your personal topic. So this week, again, is how to manage sleep as an entrepreneur. So are you getting enough sleep? I noticed recently with myself that I wasn't getting enough sleep and had to take it a couple of days to address this. And what was happening is that I was always having things going off in my mind, continuously overthinking things and not managing to sleep at all. And that played havoc with my body as well. So I was getting a lot of pain in my shoulders, in my neck, in my back, because I wasn't sleeping well, because I had a lot on my mind. So today I wanna go through how you can sleep well and what is the required amount of hours that you need to do in order to have a good night's sleep so how much sleep do you need at your age so preschoolers between three and five they need about 10 to 13 hours per 24 hours in uh, you know that they need school age six between age six and 12 they need between nine and 12 hours in a 24 hours teens 13 to 18 need about eight to 10 hours. But me, the old it's, <laughs> I need at least seven hours or more sleep per night. And that's your 18s to 60s year old people. Now, when you're looking at sleep, what do you, what do you normally sleep? What's your, your sleep pattern? How many hours do you actually get? Now, the National Sleep um, Foundation guidelines advise that a healthy adult needs between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. Babies, young children, teens need more, even more sleep and enabling them to grow and have development um, as well. People over 65 should also get seven to eight hours per night. Now, I generally go to bed, which is, is a tuck tuck towards me, around two o'clock because I can't sleep any um, earlier than that. And then I'm up again around 6.30, 7 a.m. in the morning. And I do that practically every night. But that's my body type and that's how I sleep. But I do do catch ups on on sleep. And I know it's a bad habit, but I can't sleep any sooner than that because I will definitely um, toss and turn. If I'm exhausted, I will go to bed and I will try to sleep. But I find myself waking up. So what is your sleep pattern? How many hours do you actually get per night yourself? Share with me in the comments. I'd love to know and give me any tips as well on how you can sleep, um, how I can sleep better even in the night. Do you usually get more or less than that? I, as I said, I normally get less sleep, um, primarily because that's how my body clock works, but it's not healthy. And I'm trying to adapt and get myself back into a routine of sleep. Because when you're running a business, sleep is so important. Even if you're working for someone, it is absolutely the key for your energy levels, for your for you being healthy, for your well-being. It is definitely the key um, to any of those, those areas in your life. And also being productive at work. Because when you get to walk, work, have you ever found yourself yawning in a meeting? Not because it's boring, simply because you're just really tired or you're just exhausted. Also boosting your, your immune system as well is another good way of doing that. And eating the right foods can help you um, be more productive as well as um, invigorate you through your sleep and help you to produce those sleep hormones that you need to be productive throughout the day in your business or work life. 
So how much um, sleep do you need to function? Well, as I said previously, you need um, at least as an adult seven to eight hours of sleep. Now, functioning is getting, you know, a good night deep sleep, not just a shallow one. I'm a very light sleeper. So any little noise really triggers me waking up. And that kind of is an annoying thing about me, but it's a protective thing about me as well. Because being when I was a mum, I was always alert, always aware of the kids being in the house. So I was always up at the littlest sound. I was always up and, and you know, there as their protector. But as they've left home and they've flown the nest, um, I've still got that habit. So even when they come over and stay, I'm still the one that is up and awake and they're getting a good night's sleep while I'm just thinking, oh, I need to make sure that they're okay. So there is different ways that you can do this. And I want to share with you those different ways. So what are the secrets of getting a good night's sleep? Well, according to the NHS website, if you have difficulty falling asleep, a regular bedtime routine will really get you to, to get into a, a routine here. And winding down and preparing for bed is one of them. Few people manage to stick to a, a strict routine um, bedtime. And this really does play havoc. This is as much as a problem to most people, but people with insomnia, irregular sleep hours are unhelpful as well. So if you suffer from any of these, if you're doing shift work or you suffer from insomnia, then please consult a physician or a doctor that can help you address these, these things as well. Your routine also would be dependent on what works for you. But most of all, it's important to stick to what is working and keep that as a routine as well. So tip one, sleep at regular times. First of all, keep regular sleep hours. This programs your brain to actually, and your internal body clock to know that you're going to sleep. I have a, a app on my iPhone that I, I set it and it will bleep when it's time for me to actually go to sleep. So it comes on, it shuts down all of my um, apps or any messages coming through. And it actually tells me now is the time to get to sleep so that you can take a seven hour sleep. Um, but I don't stick to it. I, I, that's naughty, that's me slapping my wrist. I don't generally stick to it. However, you can. So there's apps that allow you on your clock, on your phones, for you to get into a deep sleep as well. Schedule in between six and nine hours per night. And by doing this, you'll have a schedule for your bedtime. It is important to try to wake up at the time, at the, at the time every day as well. Again, this will program your brain. So you go to sleep at one time and wake up at one time. So it actually programs your brain that I need sleep. So if you're going to bed at 10 o'clock, you count your seven hours from there, and then you wake up at the time allotted for, for that. And you do that every night. And once you get into this routine, you will make, see the difference in that. Tip two, make sure you wind down. Winding down is cr a critical stage in preparing for bed. There are lots of ways to relax. A warm bath to relax your muscles and your mind, just taking you out of that zone. Playing some music. I love playing music before I go to bed as well, some relaxing music. Despite sometimes I do put on um, some jazz or things that will get me up and start dancing. But it also helps me to relax because it helps me to relax my mind and just dismiss the day and just think about what I've got the next day and keeps it calm. Or you can have relaxing music. You can get these on iTunes or anywhere that can really help you um, relax and go to sleep. Hypnotic music, they call it. The NHS um, apps has a massive library of music as well. But they also advise you on this site, the NHS site, is to avoid smartphones, tablets or any other electrical device as well. An hour or so before bed, because then it would allow you to just free your mind. So put in away all of these electrical things. In fact, keep them out of your room. Put them in a designated place in your home so you're not distracted. So you're not going to reach out and sort of, oh, let me just check Facebook or let me just check, you know, my WhatsApp messages or whatever you're checking. Just put it away and say, right, once I'm in my room, that's it. It is just purely to sleep. Tip two, make your bedroom sleep friendly. Now I've got here, make love, not war. Your bedroom should be a relaxing environment. 
Experts claim that there's a strong association in people's mind between sleep and the bedroom. However, certain things weaken that association, such as TVs in your room and other electrical gadgets, as I was just talking about, light, noise, and bad mattresses as well. Your bedroom is to be kept for sleep or sex, they say. Unlike most vigorous physical activities, sex makes us sleepier and it also calms us as well. This has involved, evolved in humans over the thousands of years. Your bedroom ideally needs to be in a dark, quiet and tidy and be kept at a room temperature between 18 Celsius and 24. Fit, fit some thick curtains if you need to darken out the room. Now, they do have curtains where you can darken out the room as well. But I absolutely agree with decluttering your bedroom. One of the most sanctuary places that you can go to is your room. So it should be decluttered, free of mess and chaos, because that's what we left at work or our business. So you don't want to go into your room where you've got books on your bed, you've got loads of things, it's not tidied or anything like that. And I always get into a practice of every single morning, I air my bed um, and spray my room and make sure my, my room's ventilated throughout the day. And I make sure my bed is neatly done. So when I go to bed, I'm going into a tidied room my, my room is, is my sanctuary. I've got darkened curtains. I've also got blinds, especially at, we're in the summer months in the UK. So therefore, the light streams into your room. You know, first thing in the morning, I've got light coming into my, into my room. And that can uh, awake you before you're actually wanting to wake up. So have some dark, um, heavy curtains put up at your window, therefore allowing no light to come in. So when you do wake, you're in a natural wake up um, from your alarms or natural body waking up um, zone. And then you can get up and feel refreshed as well. But always make sure your room is decluttered and it's a calming place. Now I have a TV in my room, um, but I turn it off at a certain time so that it just frees my mind. You can also do notes and things like that to, to keep your mind really going um, to, in a relaxed state. So you don't have to think about work, you just sleep, and just and be calm with yourself even if you're doing reading if you don't have a tv you could do some reading light reading before bed listen to music as i said before have a bath have a warm drink but just relax tip four keep a sleep diary it can be a good idea to keep a sleep diary it may uncover a lifestyle habits or daily activities that contribute to your sleeplessness and i don't keep a sleep diary but i do keep a diary and I know when I've got a lot of work on that, I know my sleep pattern is erupt, uh, um, interrupted basically because I know I'm thinking about what I need to do the next day or planning forward. So my mind's always on the go. What I'm doing now is making sure that whatever happens in the day, I leave it in the day. It shuts off. And I, when I go to bed, I'm going to bed to try and sleep. So here's some questions for you. Do you usually get more or less sleep than than you think you get. What's your secret of getting a good night's sleep? What is the longest you have ever gone without sleep? Now, I was back in the day when I was younger, I used to be a raver. I still love raving. I'm not going to lie about that, but I used to be a raver. So for me, I used to go from Thursday to Sunday with little or no sleep. I used to rave every day. I used to love it. I used to be out there and I used to be partying. But that's when my body was younger and could kind of handle it. Nowadays, if I go out on a Saturday, I, I'm, I'm dead to myself over the next few days. You know, I cannot do without my sleep. This is when I know I get more sleep because if I go out, I've, I've burnt the midnight hour, I've been dancing, partying all night, and it takes me a couple of days to recuperate from that. So what is the longest you've gone without sleep? Are you still a raver? Are you still one of those party goers that paints the, the, the town red? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear them. But if you've enjoyed today, please remember to um, reach out to us via email or to book a free discovery call with myself so I can go through any tips with you. But sh um, share if you like this and you think somebody else could benefit from how to get a better night's sleep as an entrepreneur, please do that. And if you want to contact me, 
please use our social media handles um, at 50 Savvy Women at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I've loved sharing how to get a better night's sleep as an entrepreneur with you this week. I look forward to sharing more with Candid Moments with myself, Sophia Gray, next week, Friday at 12 p.m. Have a lovely day.